probably eat like a million sushis by now. Welcome to Rio de Janeiro. Now, in Japan, as you may know, they have sushi conveyor belt restaurants where a conveyor belt goes around the restaurant and you pick your sushi from the conveyor belt. Here in Brazil, they don't have conveyor belts. They have people that will serve the same function, which is kind of weird to me, but we're going to go and check it out. All right, so this is the place right over here. A good sushi and bar. It's currently a Tuesday afternoon. So all the people from the financial district are out here having their lunch break. Gotta wait a couple of minutes. Let's just walk for the rest of the day. 
I don't think I need to eat for another month. Oi, gente. Boa tarde. And happy Easter. It's Easter Sunday today, which in Latin American Catholic countries is a pretty big day. We're here in the city of Manaus, which for me, I think, is one of the most interesting cities in the entire world. You know why? Because this city is built right in the heart of the Amazon rainforest and is completely surrounded by rainforest and jungle and wildlife. This is the only city in the region. Manaus is a massive city of two million people. This city is no joke. And in the 1800s, at its heyday, this was one of the richest and most important cities in the entire world. Imagine that. Then it fell onto hard times and for almost a century, it was basically a giant favela. But then it made a comeback, it became a manufacturing hub, and it transformed into the city that it is today, another vital part of the Brazilian economy. Here in the center of the city, you can find signs of this former opulence from the 1800s, back when Manaus was the center of rubber production for the entire world. This is Teatro Amazonas, the Amazonian theater. We used to have theater troops and other musicians that would come here across the world, go down the Amazon River to perform right here in the heart of the Amazon rainforest. Craziness. Nowadays, this historical center area is more of like a little tourist area. It's nice though. You could basically call Manaus the Detroit of Brazil, since in an effort to revive the city, the Brazilian government basically passed a law making it duty free. So all these companies came here, all the major companies of the world, they came here to set up basically factories and turn the city into their manufacturing hub for Brazil. Unfortunately, that's not the only parallel that Manaus has with Detroit. Just beyond this nice little touristic center, you start to have one of many violent neighborhoods that fills Manaus. Feliz Pascua. Eh, seguro caminhar fora do centro histórico? Mas não é muito aconselhável não, não é muito seguro não. Não é muito seguro. Okay. Well, unfortunately, you heard the man. I don't want to seem like an asshole, like I'm just ignoring what he said, so... Let's walk down one more block, and, uh, let the fun begin. We've only walked one block out of the historical center, and, uh, it's starting to look a bit sketchy already. Good evening. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm Tommy. I'm Tommy. I'm yeah, nice uh, to meet you too. Uh, uh, so you can come here. You see, you see. No, no tengo dinero, por eso estaba yendo ahí. Dora, Dora, cambio. <laughs> yeah, no tengo cambio. Okay. Yeah, mas feliz Pascua. Feliz Pascua. We have to break the change. May as well get my old friend Kodoche. Alright. Well, if things get serious while we're walking around, at least I have my old friend here, the Kodoche, to use as a peace offering. Unfortunately, unlike the friendly and relatively relaxed city of Boa Vista, Manaus is no joke. The city is a major drug trafficking stop on the way from Peru and Colombia, where Cocaine is produced, and then it's shipped along the Amazon River down to the coast of Brazil. 
So you get some crazy stuff happening around here. It's uh well it's not raining men but it's definitely raining. Might need to get some cover. Time to chill for a bit. Especial do Premier, já já. Melhores momentos de um ótimo primeiro tempo com Pedrinho, com Anatas Matos. Senta aqui, ó. Ah, tá bom. Melhor paixão e muita dedicação. Qual é essa cerveja? Original. Original. Boa, boa. Antártica. É uma dessa que é boa, gente. Mas, Tinho. Um homem pra essa temporada. Tá no Sport TV. É de onde? Quem? É de onde? Johnny? É, você é de onde? País? Oh, pronto! Estados Unidos. Ah, sim. E você é daqui? Brasil. Ok. Flamengo. Flamengo. Ah, Flamengo e de Rio, né? É. Você tem uh, corote aqui? Eu tenho corote, eu tenho Heineken. Heineken? Ok. Tem uma cerveja brasileira? Uma Brahma? Tem. Tem um monte aqui ainda agora. Tem um corote. Ok. Tem aqui no seu filho. Olá, Caterina. Oi, bom dia. Tudo bem? Tudo bem? Tudo bem? Hello and welcome and bem-vindo to the most famous dangerous city in the world. Welcome to Rio de Janeiro. As a kid, one of the things I always heard was that I had to go to Ipanema Beach in Rio de Janeiro and drink a beer. And I think we can uh, tick that off the checklist now. However, as I got a little bit older, the reputation of Rio de Janeiro started to change. Next to those two huge rocks, you have the favela of Vidigal, which is these days one of the safer and more calm favelas in the city. But the favelas are where over 25% of the population of Rio lives. Okay, got my shirt, got my shoes. Survived the Ipanema Beach without having anything stolen. Successful day so far. Brazil. And you know, to be honest, originally, I wasn't even gonna come to Rio de Janeiro. Cause it's, let's be honest, it's kind of a cliche. Every single foreign travel vlogger, when they come to Brazil, they come to Rio. And they most likely go to a favela. Brazilians, aren't you tired of these foreign travel vloggers coming here and just only showing the poor parts me too. But I don't know how much I'm gonna buck that trend. Bit of 
train. Okay. No idea what the hell is going on right there. Como funciona esto? Oh, Você tem ouro? Não, eu aqui não. <laughs> aqui não, mas uh, de onde vem o ouro? Mas você quer dizer? Oh, uh, aonde uh, vai o uh, ouro? Ó, oh, eu vou te dar o, o cartãozinho da loja. Ok. Aqui, ó. Oh, aqui tá, tá o número. Aí você pode ligar pra lá e se informar direitinho. Ok. okay. Tá bom? Tá bom. Agora... In case you didn't know, Rio de Janeiro has a metro system. And we're about to take it right now. Look at the Leblon. Vamos lá. Caralho. That's new. Look at how modern this metro station is. I wasn't expecting this, to be honest. And I bet you, watching at home, I think you gotta be honest. You were expecting Rio de Janeiro to be a giant shithole, didn't you? But no. Honestly, Rio de Janeiro has to be one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been to. It just has a few problems. Way nicer than any station in New York, let me tell you that. So we're now in Leblon, which is not only the richest neighborhood in Rio, but all of Brazil. And it's home to multiple celebrities, business magnates, and at least one or two lieutenants in one of the Rio drug syndicates. These are the kinds of stores you can find in Leblanc. All right. I was just walking around this neighborhood looking for a place to get a coffee and uh, a subscriber recognized me on the street and pointed out this place behind me right here. So here we go. Gonna have a nice little espresso. Salud. Now you might be wondering, just as I did, what is it that makes Rio so dangerous? What is it that gives Rio this reputation? Do they have cartels, like Mexico? Uh, and it turns out they don't, but they have something very similar. So in Brazil, you don't have cartels. You have what they call fações, basically drug syndicates, giant gangs. Over the past decade, there was a war between the two biggest fações, the Red Command, which was formed in the prisons of Rio de Janeiro. And the Amigos dos Amigos, the Friends of Friends, which admittedly is probably the cutest name for a giant drug syndicate I've ever heard. The leader of that syndicate, the Friends of Friends, was called Nem, or the King of the Hill. And around five years ago, he was arrested. It was a very big thing in Brazilian media. And now he's still in prison. People like Nem and the leaders of the Red Command got extraordinarily wealthy by importing cocaine from Peru and Bolivia and then packaging it here and forming drug empires. It allowed them to eventually move down from the hill that you see back there and buy a beachfront property here in the richest neighborhoods of the city. Even after they were captured and put into prison, they still call the shots in the gangs from prison a very unique dynamic that you have here in Brazil. Oi, gente, from Salvador. I got a really interesting offer from one of my subscribers. He told me, Tommy, you want to go and hang out with some professional UFC fighters? And I said, uh, well, I didn't wake up planning to do that, but sure, why not? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go and check out their gym as they get ready for a big fight this weekend. Vamos lá. All right, let's take a walk in here. All 
Right, so over here you have like the next Habib of the UFC and the next Mike Tyson over here. Próximos campeones del mundo. Hey man, vocês estão cansados ou não? Pronto para o próximo luta? Ok. Two, three. <laughs> this is Madero over here. Madero has the same problem as me. Like he can't gain weight that fast, so he's in the lower weight class. Estava dizendo. Você tem o mesmo problema que eu. Você tem que comer muito para ganhar peso. But you can still kick all your asses. Just keep that in mind. Em geral, você pode uh, tomar como álcool e uh, coisas assim quando não está em treinado. Ah, é, álcool. É, tipo, se fora do treino você pode beber. Não, ah, não de, de, a, a gente tem nosso ciclo social, só que é, o que a disciplina da academia prega é que, tipo assim, um atleta que tá querendo chegar lá no UFC, nível UFC, não faça uso dessa substância, né? Tipo, ah, okay. E se fizer, faça o que faça social, Natal, Ano Novo, ah, entendeu? Okay. Até Carnaval porque, está é, bem. Não, até porque aqui tem polições. Ah. Quem beber aqui. <risos> Clareamento dental. O dentista. O dentista. O dentista está aqui. Se você liberar, é melhor. Vai. Outro. 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 About to find out how much weight I've lost since I've been traveling around. Oh. You're gonna be a lightweight. No. Depends on the weight you can get in. Yeah. A lightweight? Okay. Yeah. Four, four kills. Yeah. Four. Okay. But you could fight with. How many pounds is that? Is it like 150? It's 160. 160. Okay. Yeah, 160 pounds. A little bit higher than I thought. And I could be in the lowest weight class of the UFC. There are some guys that lose 20 kilos. Okay. That's very crazy. They start with 70 kilos and go to 57. Yeah. And like that. I can't do that. I'm jealous of those dudes. Is there anyone who ever starts a UFC career at like 35 years of age? Yeah, there is. For real. The, one of the greatest of all time in the UFC, Randy Couture, started with 38 and he fought until 47. And well, he was yeah. the oldest champion. There's a guy named Yo Romero yeah. that is with 42 in his peak. There is a Brazilian called Glover Teixeira, who is the, he's the UFC champion, the light heavyweight. Yeah. He became the champion with 43 years old. Yeah. And there is a lot of guys, it's not a um, young guy's sport. You have to be kind of in your 32 to 33 to be on peak. And you have to say, fight or fight, you can start now. There you go. <laughs> it's never too late. And you are in the right place. Yeah. But you are going to have to pass to, <laughs> to get your teeth clean. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you might get some deodorant in your mouth once in a while, but you never know. Come to Salvador, come train here. Enjoy the carnival. All right, so uh, Andre here is going to take us on a walk around the neighborhood. Biggest celebrity of Brothers. Brothers. Okay. So this bairro se chama Brothers. Yes. Okay. Brothers is a barrio. A barrio is a é a city. Como a galera fala, né? É um bairro dentro de um bairro dentro de outro bairro, tá ligado? Tipo, vamos lutar com um cara, da Rússia. Yeah. Here's the, the point. Aqui é onde a gente fala um cafezinho. Tudo bem? Coffee? É, pô. Eu tô louco, mano. Coffee? Eu tô louco. Tudo bem? Obrigado. Conta dele. 
É da rouba, cara. Ok. Pode ir embora. Não, não precisa de açúcar. Então... <risos> não precisa ou precisa? Não, não precisa. Ei. Mas tem que dar sua vida com sua luta. Yeah, it's, it's some erection. That's, that's what I thought. The Cialis of Brazil. It only costs like two dollars here. For your information. Because the, the UFC is not a, a league, it's a, a, a business. Yeah. They, it's, if, if you fight with Dana White, you're screwed up. Yeah. Like Chris. I, Chris, Chris Cyborg, one of the greatest female fighters of all time. Yeah. She fought with the, not really, but yeah, with Dana White, and he's never, she's never going to fight in the UFC. Again. There's that a sucks. lot of yeah. people that are fired. Uh, yeah. On the other side, if you have a good relationship, yeah, you are going to be very, very nice. Basically, Dana White is God. Yeah. In the UFC. Do Even not selling the company. Do not piss off Dana White. <laughs> Dana White, I love you. You're a great guy. Here we are walking with the future 93. Yeah. The, the show fight champion. Set this man up. Future champion right here. Ah, boa sorte a todos. Okay. Boa sorte. Valeu. Valeu. Boa. Valeu. Yeah. Valeu. 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 Bom sorte. All right. You know, I'm gonna let down my ego for just a little bit here and say I think any of those dudes could probably beat me up. Eh, whatever. We'll be close though. Uber? Sim. Okay. Sim. É bom, né? Sim.